guys, what's going on and welcome back to the Purpose Save, where two games have been played and two games have been won. Yes, yeah, since the Crystal Palace 1-1 draw away from home, we have played two games, West Ham at home, Southampton away, 1-0 and 3-0 respectively. Now, the West Ham, who are in fifth, one place ahead of us, that looked like it was going to be a 0-0 board draw. West Ham, somewhat of a bogey team at this point, let's not forget, dumped us out of the uh, FA Cup last year. In the semi-final stage and this is our first meeting since and that would look like it was going to be a nil-nil ball draw however Tex decided to take up the mantle and score a 90th minute winner meaning that we came away from that one with all three points which was nice because now we're on exactly the same points as them but obviously one place behind still for other reasons now Southampton was actually a little bit more surprising now Southampton are a little bit further down the table first half was somewhat Dull a little bit again. Thought, oh no, here we go again. Another dull game. Chad Lamb got injured very early on, annoyingly, and it's quite a bad one as well. About five or six weeks on that, sadly. So, in what is our position with the least amount of depth, we've taken the biggest injury. So, <laughs> January's around the corner though. Hopefully, we can fix that there. However, in the second half, I was actually, as a result of that injury, I was forced to play a central defender in the right back position. So, I thought, oh god. This is going to be a loss, isn't it? But no, second half came round. Guys Hendricks scored two and Jordan Much scored one. You might recognise a similar pattern emerging here with the goals that we've been scoring lately. Ferrer on the ball here. Goes out to Tex on this right-hand side. He takes a little bit of a run here. Gets sort of pushed out to the side. And, oh, well, there's a through ball. So, yeah. The second time that's happened with Hendricks, in fact, as well. So, yeah, very similar situation to what happened with that Cardiff goal that I called sumptuous last episode. Uh, just the other side this time, though, instead. All this does mean, like I said, we are in sixth, behind on goal difference. Only one goal. We actually have a positive goal difference now, which is nice. Uh, we don't obviously feature in any of the top things for anything, although, that being said, a lot of people are quite close, except for goals. Ben Osborne has six assists. Our left-back has six assists, which says a lot about our style of play and where we've been successful, I think. However, today's game is against Brighton, who I highlight as being a bit of a surprise last time around. However, they have dropped off a little bit in those two games since. They have fallen down from 7th to 10th. Cardiff have actually picked up a point since then as well, which is nice. However, apart from the serious injury to Chad Lamb, we are forming up quite in our first 11, as things are. That was not a sentence. Uh, but yes, rare and goal, Osborne, Pereira, Garcia, Medina... Instead now, of course, Ferreira, Martin and Reed, Lopez and Tex, and Hendricks up front. Yes, as you saw last time around, Hendricks picked up two goals. I'm hoping that's going to kick things forward and he's going to start banging them in fairly more regularly. Now, I've just bobbed Rodrigo Tarin on the bench instead of Kiros just for these matches whilst Chad Lamb's injured. He is our best central defender in the right-back role. Still not amazing, but at least he has some competency there as things stand. So... That's kind of the reason for that swap around a little bit. It is worth also highlighting at this stage, despite the fact that Martin is only worth two stars in this Mazzala role, he has been putting in some excellent performances. Well worth the £475 a week we're paying him now. Yeah, he got another bump. He's been pretty much ever-present in the matches that he's actually been fit for, which is nice. Oh, they picked up Kevin Wimmer. Sorry, I didn't know how to say personally at the start of this, so that's where I recognise the name. They picked up Pedraj Rajkovic, which is probably part of the reason why they're doing... Mind you, there's that name, which I can't pronounce. Still got Gross. One of their better players, Gross. Pick up where we left off. I was away from home against the South Coast side. And it was 3-0. So, can't really ask more from you than that. Off we go. A highlight after 40 seconds, which is somewhat terrifying because it's starting in our half. Gross on the ball. Loses the proper S set symbolization in the 2D format, and that just goes wide. Thank God for that. We don't do well when we concede early on, uh, from what I've noticed, and that's usually against top six teams when that happens, though. Tau. What on earth was that? That looked like I was going over. I want to see this because. Good God! I mean, in fairness, there was a Brighton player in the way of our goalkeeper from saving that. He literally couldn't have got to that if he tried because there was a Brighton player blocking his leap. But, good God, that was a goal. 
I wish I could sort out more than one highlight. However, we're going forward now for what appears to be our first proper attack of the game. Just misses. I'm guessing Petraj Rajkovic likes the number 95 because it's a slightly odd number to give a player. That's just missed. I don't like the fact that we are not doing... I mean, the possession is fairly even. But we are well behind on the shots and getting it. However, this highlight is somewhat vanishing at this stage. They are approaching once again, which I don't like. Bernardo. That's... Oh, it's a save. That's an excellent save. I thought it was a cross, by the way, that pinged off there, but it was actually an excellent save from Rhea. Gross on this one. However, that does get out to text and highlight ends, because it's a quarter. Although it looks like this half will just run away from us now. Looks like we got into it a little bit more towards the end of that half. Texas is a smidge frustrated. And this... Hmm, it's that bad that they've decided to tell me we've struggled for possession in the opposition half twice. Well, that could have gone better. We weren't that bad. But if we can improve, that would be great. Although, in fairness, they've done fairly terrible. Right, if we could start banging them in this half, that would be lovely. Osborne out on the left. Of course, this is just the kickoff highlight. So, unsurprisingly, that went nowhere. But our wingers are not doing very well at all. Ray is on a 6.3, and I'm not sure why. Because he's done reasonably all right. He couldn't save the goal that they scored, and he's done excellent saves in between. This half is... what 71 minutes and nothing's happened this half. Okay, well... Lopez, despite being regarded as one of our better players now, has not been putting in the performances that we would really hope. And actually, honestly, I haven't got much I can do here. I'm just going to go with a slightly more aggressive formation right now. And also stick Amin Guri on for Lopez, who has had a very poor game. I did find out, by the way, I just had a note on the analysis pages, and it looks like Ray is being credited as a mistake for the goal, even though he literally couldn't have got that if he tried. Which is a bit annoying of the engine, but hey -o. I don't really feel the need to change a lot. Pedro Ferrer is a little bit tired. So I will swap him off for much then, and uh, off we roll for the last 15 minutes. And Osborne with a, well, sure free kick too much inwards. A lot of space on this right hand side. Nope, Reed's gone for it, and the wall that's hit the bar and bounced back and nearly nearly schmeichled off Rajkovic there. Last couple of minutes, I'm just going to do something bold. <laughs> just to try and force force a goal in these last couple of minutes. I don't think it's going to change anything. No, it hasn't. They've actually pinched the possession there at the very end. And that's ended up... Well, it's our first loss, admittedly, outside of the traditional top six. We've talked about this before. Right to narrow the gap, of course, they're back up to seventh with that win. That's actually probably part of the reason why they dropped so far and they actually had that game in hand, I guess. Arsenal, however, still yet to play this weekend and can leapfrog back into 7th. So, as things stands, three points clear of 7th no matter what happens with the Arsenal game there. And, well, we're 10 points behind Man United in 4th, so that's not going to... Like, top 4, we can just ignore altogether and I think we can ignore any fears of relegation. I am very disappointed in that, to be honest. That's probably our worst performance of the season. Other than the Liverpool... I guess, I guess the Liverpool match was a poor performance. It's hard to really, hard to really consider the... Liverpool performance, considering how bad we were in that. We didn't get a single shot on that one. However, it almost seems a good match for the fact that it was only 2-0. And very much looking like it was going to be only 1-0 for the vast majority of that. So I'm not really sure. I guess Liverpool is technically our worst performance, but defensively that was pretty damn good. Anyway, we have the Cowboy Cup midweek, so let's give everyone a rest. There we are, lovely. I mean, it's still not amazing. 16 appearances in total, 12 starts, and still only 5 goals. Oh, yes. Um, This is the thing that's happened, by the way. I asked for better training facilities, and they went yes. So, thank you, new chairman. Really dull. 1-0, 1-0, 1-0, 1-0. week. And welcome back for the Ipswich match, the Carabao Cup quarter-final. Now, I've gone for an attacking formation on this one, mostly just because... Uh, we are the favourites of this, despite being away from home. And also I wanted to get a bit of rotation as a side, so I wanted to play Gribbin, who hasn't really featured at all for us this season yet. Uh, he's on a backup contract, but he did come back to come back come to me this week saying, I've not really been playing, playing a lot of matches, and you know, me telling him that it's a long season didn't help. Um he's been more of a casualty of the formation. We've not really been playing this attacking formation at all this season, so I figured I might as well go for it. Martin was probably the most tired of all the players as well. Admittedly, still 92%. But 
but he was probably the most tired of all the players who played the last match, so I figured might as well just give Grimmin a run out on this one. Torben's going to start on the left, uh, partially just to rotate Lopez out, uh, just to give a couple of players more uh, game time. Also because Lopez hasn't been playing amazingly, I want to see how Torben deals with a starting role. Zagre is going to start on the left-back position. Nothing wrong with Osborne, just we have three left-backs and I figured get one of them a game now. Oliver is going to step into the midfield as well over Ferreira just because he operates a little bit better further forward in that ball-winning midfielder role. And yeah, that's the, about the uh, grand sum of the changes. Ruiz will start this match, of course, that's another change. But we've been rotating the strikers all through the season. That's probably not really helped them in terms of consistency, I guess. But Ferreira is going to still be in goal uh, just because it's kind of important that we ha play our best goalkeeper for a quarterfinal, I think. I've played for Milinkovic Savic once this season. Uh, that was earlier in this campaign. I think it was the uh, Carabao Cup fourth round. It was whichever, whichever round we had like a League One opposition for. Basically, I played Blinkovich Savage. I feel really sorry for him. I brought him in fully in the anticipation that he was going to have a campaign in the Championship, maybe develop as a player and be good enough for the Premier League when we got there next season. That's what I was expecting to happen. But Pundits sometimes works. There we are. I kind of fully expect Bling of Savage to uh, disappear at the end of the season. They appear to have a very small pitch. I don't know why. We've just been that zoomed out. There we are. Lovely. Right. No one else playing today. So that left-hand side is completely redundant. They've gone for a box down of 4-4-2. That player in the middle is very tired already. Zyro. Fetch. I thought the game was broken there for a second. Nidan. That's the one who's absolutely knackered already. 12 minutes in. Dozzle. Betch, Dozzle, Betch, not Dozzle, Betch. I don't know where this is going, but it's incredibly dull at this stage. Zyro, forward momentum happening, middling for them, but are we going to nip into that? No, 17 Tormund does not quite get onto that. Mason also not amazingly fit either. Um, his first initial was Jay, and I really hope his full name is Jason Mason, because, well, obvious reasons. Reed. This highlight has gone on forever for no reason. Tormin going forward now for us. It looks like it might actually be a chance for us in the grand scheme of things. I say chance. It's a goal. That's 1-0. Tormin scores. Bradford hit Ipswich Town on the counter-attack. I wouldn't really call that a counter-attack if I'm completely honest. Yeah, they have to do a little bit of backtracking, but let's face it, their entire defence was present, if not really doing anything. Excellent. Torben scores. Well, I guess Lopez's position is under threat now then. Brought him in to see if he did better. Takes on a free kick, however. And that's hit the bar. And oh, it's pinged off. And Grimmin scored. One. Oh. Mm. That's great. Sorry. I mean, that's great. Grimmin scored. But obviously two people I brought in as middle he's just sort of capitalised on that. But two players I brought in on rotation have decided to score. So... Well, just about to get hit. Well, we're obviously in the middle of December right now. And the last thing I kind of need is starting role decisions. Oh, Tormund has got taken a knock. Great. Twisted knee doesn't sound fun. Oh, Lopez's position is no longer under threat. So just uh, complacent. That works. I just want to see... I want to see how Tormund does. Because obviously it is a yellow injury, but he is getting slightly better now. Just because it didn't look like he was going to recover... In that first half. It's just because I don't really have a left-sided player I can bring on. I can move Gribbin over there, I guess, and probably one of our midfielders can do AM reasonably well. Uh, Brian, I thought I was going to get to Tormund again for a two goals, but Gribbin's going to pick this up on the edge of the box. Oliveira, a bit further back. Pushes out to Zagre, who is uh, more attacking of the lone... Well, let's hit the post. Yeah, he's sort of recovered perfectly well. I mean, we are on top of this fully right now. Uh, Gribbin can obviously play on the left, take some play on the left, if necessary. I just don't really think I've got any... Oh, other... another match has... What? Where's... What? Where's that Man United match come from? Reed's running forward now. Our Reed. Uh, double E-D. Uh, they've got an E-A-D in goal. Tex. Through here, Tex. Back to Gribbin, on the edge of the box. Reed. Tormin. Makes it three. Twisted knee... I said he didn't stop him doing that then, did it? I think I probably will take him off for the last 20, though. Oh, he's on a hat-trick, though. Just realised. But there's Tommy, just picked it up, and 
Well, defense, defending is optional from them, I think. Oh my god, there's a highlight straight away. If this is Tormund getting a hat-trick, then I will definitely take him off afterwards. Let's go back to Reed, and... Well, I kind of got worried for them for a second there. Dozzle. Ruiz is now that. Ruiz is going to run through the middle on this. Oh, Texas. No, not quite. That's bounced. Well, it's bounced off Jackson to Garcia. Medina. Reed. Back to Medina. Back to Reed. Back to Medina. Can we not start this now? Back to Reed. <laughs> Gone forward to Gribbon, though. Ruiz has swiveled around his marker there and so close. Two for Gribbon instead. Well. <laughs> uh, starting 11 choices to be made now. Oh, that's brilliant for Reese. Just completely loses his marker and frankly should have scored himself. But Gribbin capitalising on that. Oh, I've not been playing that well much. Yeah, well, now you probably ought to be. I could actually stick Osborne on the left though. I think he can go all the way up that far. You know what? Sorry. I'm actually just going to do straight swap. Gory's not amazing on the side, but let's bring him on because why not? Uh, much can sort of do that. He's not amazing. We'll bring Ferreira on and we'll just put him as deep lying instead. For these last 12 minutes, Dozzle, Betch. Let's start, let's start, let's, let's, can we not do the Dozzle, Betch thing again? Dozzle. Back to his goalie. That's nearly out of the map. Uh, out of the. Off the pitch is the words I was going for. Zagre moving forward. Uh, oh, that's pinged off him, but Zagre. Reacts first. They seem very sluggish, the Ipswich players. Ferreira. Into Reed. Gribbin again. Reed. Tex. Uh, 15 almost has a chance for a run there. Gribbin nearly gets his hat trick. A vintage performance from Kevin Gribbin. Well, he's taken that short and that's smacked off number 35 for a throw in. Imagine that's just a corner highlight. It was, yeah. How do I take any players off right now? Reed is on 7.6 and he hasn't scored. Which kind of says a lot. Texas only has 7.1. I mean, I don't have anyone to bring on for him, admittedly, so... Reed's a bit tired. Only, only change I can really make at that point. Reed's a bit tired. Didn't really put the right amount of depth on the bench, really, in terms of positions. Gribbin to Ferreira. All the way back to Garcia, who obviously has plenty of space to sort of make a decision to what to do here. Medina is his choice. Ah, <sighs> Medina. Well... Zed Brown running all the way over here for this is highlight continues and well it's four one. He picks up the ball and decides to run back to the centre circle as if there's any chance of a four four here. They've had four shots on target and let's be honest we've switched off here. Zed Brown completely switched off didn't track Dozzle's run at all nobody really defending at this stage but sorry it's four one. And 93 minutes pretty much up. 93 minutes is what we've been predicted to have. So this is going to get passed around the midfield. All the way back to Raya. Slightly concerned. Out to Medina. And, well, I think the ball's technically hit me there as he's gone off the pitch for full time. Kevin Gribbin scored his first career goal for Bradford City today. And, oh, man of the match. Barely. Oh, no, Tormund didn't go man of the match. Very pleased with the result and the performance. Lovely jubbly. So, I will just bring you the semi-final draw when that comes around. Okay, here we are, four teams in... Oh, God, the Liverpool, Man City, Man United. So, we're not getting through this, then. However, Man City, Man City, Man United, Bradford are home to Liverpool. Although, Carabao Cup is two legs anyway, isn't it? So, well, I guess all we can hope for is a shot. It was nice having a run when we did. However, well, I just clicked forward a day and by accident, and well, slight problem. Three to four weeks. Chad Lamb's still injured between nine days and four weeks. That's not got any more precise, has it? We don't have a right back. And that level, first leg of that level match happens within four weeks. Yes, next time around, Tottenham and Chelsea. Tottenham home, Chelsea fourth, uh, FA Cup third round. The board want me to get to the fourth round of the FA Cup, but <sighs> Chelsea away. I think they're going to have to rely on an excellent Premier League to, to counterbalance that. Also, of course, one thing about that board transfer, which is unhelpful to me, the, so I, t I talked about the pluses and the minuses of getting extra funds via the board takeover. Of course, there is one negative thing about a board takeover, and that's the fact that all your progress you made with the previous one is wiped clean, 
and you're on a completely clean slate for the new guy. So it's only performances since he turned up that count. So better keep up with those. So Tottenham and Chelsea next time round. Until then, ta-ra.